Hi everyone, and welcome to Lazy Lion. We're going to kick this jam session off by introducing a series that has been labeled by many as another cornerstone gateway anime, especially for us here in the West. And we'd be remiss if we didn't dedicate a whole video to it. We're talking about Cowboy Bebop. This series is a sci-fi space operatic hit that mixes together multiple genres, such as westerns, Hong Kong action cinema, cyberpunk, and American film noir. Add some intriguing characters with witty dialogue and a killer soundtrack, and you've got yourself a masterpiece. Let us tell you why you should be just as obsessed with Cowboy Bebop as we are. That is, if you aren't already. So, here we go. Three, two, one, let's jam. The year is 2071, and humans have colonized the solar system. This human colonization of the solar system is reminiscent of the American expansion into the Wild West. When describing the new American frontier, historians Robert Van Hine and John Mac Farragher said, It is a tale of conquest, but also one of survival, persistence, and the merging of peoples and cultures that gave birth and continuing life to America. The same can also be said about the newly colonized planets and moons of the Cowboy Bebop realm, and the people who inhabit them. With this expansion, and with the ability that humans possess to adapt to new things, people have traveled to almost every corner of our solar system, and with them have brought various ways of life, making the solar system one giant melting pot. As positive as this outcome has been, it has made things more difficult for the police and their ability to uphold the law. Due to the world being so much bigger and the fact that people have settled further and further away from each other, it has become increasingly more challenging to monitor these extremely remote regions. Therefore, it comes as no surprise then that the crime rates have increased. This has forced police to turn to outside help which is where our crew of misfit bounty hunters come in. Because, obviously, this wouldn't be a space western without a couple of bounty hunters. Traveling between planets aboard the Bebop, an old fishing vessel that's been converted into the base of operations for our ragtag team of space cowboys, we're introduced to Jet Black, who is both the ship's owner and an ex-intrasolar system police officer, who has some bitter feelings towards the agency after losing his arm. We then have Spike Spiegel, a former high-ranking member of a crime syndicate who had to fake his own death to escape. Next is Faye Valentine, a con artist who has no memories of her past. Following her is Edward Wong, a genius hacker who deals with abandonment issues and is a 13-year-old girl. And finally, there's Ayn, a Welsh corgi who was bioengineered in a lab to become a data dog. To say they've all got some psychological baggage is an understatement, but these complex three-dimensional characters who are all running from something, be it death, loneliness, or their pasts, are some of the most fleshed out and interesting characters you're likely to come across in anime, and maybe even film and television. Cowboy Bebop first premiered in Japan in 1998 and then again in 2001 in North America on Adult Swim, being the first anime to do so. The series was created by Hajime Yatate, a pseudonym for the creative team behind Cowboy Bebop at Studio Sunrise. Many members of the team had worked together on previous projects, such as Macross Plus, Mobile Suit Gundam 0083 Stardust Memory, and the Visions of Escaflone. But Cowboy Bebop was the first time in which Shinichiro Watanabe got to try his hand at being the solo director. Not a bad project to start off your directorial career. And since doing Cowboy Bebop, he's gone on to give us more anime delights, such as Samurai Champloo, Space Dandy, and Carol and Tuesday, among others. But as visionary as Watanabe was for the project, 
He couldn't have done it without the help of his creative team. With Keiko Nobumoto as the screenwriter for the project, along with Yoko Kano as the music composer, and Toshihiro Kawamoto and Kimitoshi Yamane as the character and mechanical art designers, respectively, Cowboy Bebop's producers Masahiko Minami and Yoshiyuki Takei basically had themselves a royal flush dream team. Together, they created an anime unlike anything else out there for its time. Using mainly cell animation, they smoothly wove a 26-episode series that grabbed hold of the hearts and minds of their audience. Watanabe said his main influence for the show was the anime Lupin the Third. And watching the series, it's impossible not to see its stamp all over it. From the comedy to the action to the band of characters, one can't help but be reminded of it. But where Lupin the Third tends to be a bit more family friendly, Cowboy Bebop is targeted towards a more mature audience. Watanabe himself stated he wanted to appeal to a more sophisticated and adult audience. Another thing that in our opinion greatly helped the series get so much traction in the West is that this new and futuristic world seems somehow familiar. Even though it's set in the future, it's filled with enough nostalgia not to be too alienating. These new colonized settlements are also grimy and dirty and feel lived in, just like the present day Earth that we're all familiar with. This is actually what makes the show so easy for audiences to digest. It looks and feels familiar. And even though it mostly takes place on Mars, it feels like it could have taken place here, in cities like New York and Hong Kong. We also loved that the cities and cast of characters were so multicultural. This was probably another reason why Cowboy Bebop appealed to so many people in the West. Another way they were able to catch the attention of the West was with their soundtrack. Can we just talk about Yoko Kano's genius for a second? For her work on Cowboy Bebop, Kano formed a band called the Seatbelts. With them, she created music score after music score, ranging from jazz to classical to blues to rock. It's impressive to know that one team is behind such a diverse array of musical styles. The soundtrack was instrumental in making Cowboy Bebop hip and cool. We're kind of ashamed to say that before researching the soundtrack, we never really thought about the second part of the title, Bebop. I mean, the cowboy part is pretty self-explanatory. This series is a space western, it has bounty hunters who are known as space cowboys, so cowboy makes sense. But then there's Bebop, and other than it being the name of the ship, we never really thought about it further. Which is a shame, because that means we basically missed out on half of what made Cowboy Bebop so interesting. The part we were missing was Bebop Jazz, and the more we learned about it, the more we realized how influential it was to the series. When people say that Cowboy Bebop is jazz, they're not wrong. And the Bebop from the title isn't merely a reference to the music, but also a hint as to what the pacing and style of the series will be recognized by everyone as something fresh and stimulating. It's fast-paced, it's complex, it's creative, it's inspiring, and it's fun to experience. Wait, are we talking about Cowboy Bebop or Bebop Jazz? We kid. But see, that's how uniform these two things are. The creative team even took this concept a step further by referring to each episode as a session, like a jam session and each episode title is named after a song or album title, such as how episode 9, titled Jamming with Edward, is named after a Rolling Stones album. That's how integral the music is to the series. In case people don't know what bebop jazz is, here's a quick history lesson. Bebop jazz sprung up in the mid-1940s as a response to the oversaturated music market that at the time was obsessed with big band swing music. Swing music was used as a way to boost the American people's morale during World War II with its lively and danceable tunes. But after 1945, the war was over and musicians became tired of constantly playing the same kind of music day in and day out. The market had become so commercialized that it didn't allow for musicians to freely express their own sound or ideas. Due to this general feeling of musical stagnation, 
many non-conforming musicians, such as Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, and Thelonious Monk, were now ready to move on to more creative and expressive tunes. And so the bebop movement was formed. They started playing late night jam sessions where they would focus on technical ability over standardized synchronization. Gone were the days of organized melodies. Bebop was all about improvisation. And just like the Cowboy Bebop series, it was geared towards a more sophisticated audience. But it also had the power to appeal to people of all walks of life and ethnicities, becoming a melting pot of ideas and influences. Bebop Jazz did for the music world what Cowboy Bebop did for the anime world. And perhaps that was Watanabe's goal the whole time. We know that Watanabe used to tell his team that they were creating a show that would be remembered three decades later. We're sure he's delighted to have not only been proven right, but also with the knowledge that not only has his creation still held up over time, but that it's also considered by most as one of the greatest animes of all time. A classic masterpiece. Due to the fact that this show was made for a more mature audience in mind, there are many philosophical themes that are explored throughout the series, such as the difficulties of running from one's past. As we mentioned earlier, each character seems to be running from something. These are all complex characters that have a lot of baggage, and they have become so weighed down by the pain of their pasts that they've become numb to the present. The crew from the Bebop have become accustomed to seeing life through tinted glasses. And what's worse, they've all adopted the stoic principle of keeping things to themselves. Luckily for the audience, the soundtrack offers us a way to peek over the walls they've built up to shut everyone out. These are our only clues as to what these characters are actually feeling or thinking. Which brings us to our next theme, loneliness. In order to protect themselves from further pain, they go to great extremes to keep others at arm's length. Because of this, they also suffer from extreme loneliness. Faye is a great example of this. After waking from a cryogenic sleep that's lasted decades, she realizes she's now all alone, and she can't remember her past, let alone who she is. This makes her feel incredibly alone since Faye doesn't even have the memories of her family or friends to keep her company. Other members of the crew, especially Spike, find comfort with the idea of fate, which introduces the next theme, fatalism. We often hear Spike muttering the words, whatever happens, happens, particularly when he's being faced with a dire situation. This gives him a nonchalant and cool attitude but it also makes him a lot more reckless. The thought being that if he acts as though he has no control over the event, then he also has no responsibility for the outcome. Most anime protagonists are constantly trying to change fate and are never content to just accept it and give up. But Spike is different. He treats events and situations as being predetermined. And if it's fate, why fight it? In the end, it's all inevitable, right? However, there is a difference between being calm and in control and being indifferent. In situations where all hope seems lost, that is when we need to fight the hardest for our goals. This is where the next theme comes in to make things even harder. Existentialism. The crew of the Bebop also experience the feeling of living in an existential void. Meaning, knowing one's own insignificance in the grander scheme of things knowing that no choice or thing that one does is important enough to have any effect on the universe. This epiphany can lead people to feel depressed, knowing that nothing they do has any real purpose, and can leave people thinking, well, what's the point? These feelings lead the crew to also experience existential ennui. As everything seems pointless, they aren't really living in the present. As they go on in this dreamlike state, continually drifting through space as well as life, their only tether being their past, something each of them is unwilling to move on from. Time seems to have frozen in place for them, which makes them unable to live in the present, let alone think about the future. 
this, in turn, leads to a life filled with boredom and loneliness. The past keeps them from having any real purpose in the world, other than as the bearers of the past, which can be a heavy burden. At times, this may get a little somber, but it's one wild ride you'll be glad you took. Not only is the show phenomenal, but there is the added bonus of a feature film that takes place in the same universe and timeline. If you aren't sure about investing your time into a 26 episode series, but still want to get a feel for the show, we would highly recommend checking out the film. It can stand alone and really captures the spirit and essence of the show. So now listen up buckaroos, this here is a big catch you won't want to miss out on. Cowboy Bebop is sure to wow you, if not only for its spectacular animation, but also for its soundtrack that's seriously out of this world. That's it for now. We hope you found this video informative. If you did, feel free to click the like button to let us know. And if you want to see more videos like this, you can check out our channel. Or if anybody's interested in seeing some of our other content, such as comics, or you just want to get to know a little more about us, you could check out our blog at marrowmanias.com. See you around, Space Cowboy, and thanks for watching. Stay obsessed.